Howdy folks, and welcome to the last alternate starter best team where we're going to be using my favorite starter, Meowskarada. Recently, we just got through Kukwavl, and I know it was just very, very recently that we did it, but because I love Meowskarada, I couldn't resist. With all the best teams so far, we've had quite the variety of Pokemon show up. Today, I want to try to make this team a little different than what we've done so far, while also maintaining a great best team. With the members selected, I think I've done a pretty solid job though, and I think you will as well. With that, let's just hop right in. Before we get started though, we have a brand new exclusive series over on Mystic Umbreon Shorts. I'm going to be taking a Pokemon of your guys' choice and seeing how well it performs in a Scarlet and Violet playthrough, should said Pokemon be on your team. This series will go up once a week every Sunday, so be sure to head over to Mystic Umbreon Shorts to go check that out. This week's Pokemon is Scovillain. Also over on Mystic Reads, I'm reading the Yaju Sanin, a Naruto fanfic, and Road to be a Pokemon Master Kanto edition, where Ash and Serena have a Kanto adventure together. I will leave links for both these channels in the description below and in the ad card above. Of course, the starter Pokemon for this team is Meowskarada, and it's pretty freaking good in comparison to other grass types we've had in the past for playthroughs. Now, if Meowskarada had Protean, it would have definitely been the best starter for sure, but due to it being a hidden ability, that isn't the case. Meowskarada does have the dark typing though, and even though I don't find its grass typing super useful, the dark typing definitely is. Actually, Meowskarada has a very unique move specifically to it that probably makes it the best grass type in the game, but I'll get into that once we hit the moveset. Meowskarada sports a pretty good attack and speed stat, with 110 and 123 respectively. This Pokemon is fast and hits really hard. Trust me, you'll see what I mean. As far as movesets go, we're going to be going with Flower Trick, Night Slash, Play Rough, and Low Sweep. Flower Trick is that oh-so-powerful Grass-type move that I mentioned before that pretty much makes Meowskarada a force to be reckoned with. You see, Flower Trick is guaranteed a critical hit every time you use it. That is insanely busted from an in-game playthrough perspective. And I know from experience. Flower Trick can be learned upon evolution. Next up is Night Slash. It's Dark Stab. While not getting a crit every time like Flower Trick does, Night Slash still has a chance from time to time. It can be learned at level 38. Play Rough is next, and that's for those other dark types that get in the way. This can be learned at level 47. Lastly, we have Low Sweep, and that can be learned via TM. What's cool about Low Sweep is that it drops the opponent's speed by a stage, which is going to come in a lot of handy for the rest of the team members. And not to mention, you also have coverage for Steel types. This is learned via TM and can be found near West Province Area 3 up a tower. It can also be created via recipe by using 3000 League Points, 3 Krogunk Poison, and 3 Mankey Fur. Next up on the team is a returning best team member that's been in this series quite a few times. Not to mention, it's one of the cutest and one of my favorite Pokemon. Say hi to Guardy once again. Just kidding, we're going on a different path this time. This time, I chose Azumarill. Azuril can be found as early as South Province Area 1, so pretty much at the very beginning of the game. As far as abilities go, catch one with huge power. From there, Azuril evolves into Meryl via Friendship and then at level 18 into Azumarill. If you want to capture a Meryl though in the wild, that's also an option as well. To evolve Azuril super fast into Meryl, you can grab the Soothe Bell at Delibird Presence for 5,000 Poke Dollars. On top of its very early game availability and great ability, Azumarill gets two fantastic stab moves right from the get-go. Let's find out what those moves are now. Aqua Tail, Play Rough, Ice Spinner, and Brick Break. Aqua Tail and Play Rough can pretty much be learned right when Azumarill evolves, with Aqua Tail at level 21 and Play Rough at level 25. Two base power 90 attacks pretty much straight from the get-go. Due to this, I would rank Azumarill very high up there in terms of water and fairy types. Ice Spinner is your ice coverage, and that TM can be obtained from Gresha after defeating him. Lastly, Brick Break is a TM that can be found in East Province Area 2, or the recipe for it is 5,000 League Points, 3 Makuhita Sweat, 3 Halucha Down, and 3 Crab Brawler Shell. Now, I'm aware some of you probably don't like the Aqua Tail accuracy. That's fine, I get it. I only have it here for convenience. However, you can get the Waterfall TM in North Province Area 1, or the recipe for it is 8,000 LP, 5 Magikarp Scales, 3 Basculin Fangs, and 3 Aracuda Scales. This way, you don't have the accuracy problem, and you have a chance to flinch the opponent. At the halfway point, I actually decided to go of two choices, depending on the game you're playing, or if you want to trade it over. I decided on Armor Rogue if you're playing Scarlet, and an alternative choice being Arcanine. What about Valcarona? 
Well, you can decide that fate for yourself. If you want to level up Larvesta until level 59, be my guest. I will say that the wait is very long, but if you do have the patience, Valkorona is obviously a very solid choice. I just think it's too late. Now with Armor Rogue, I decided I wanted something that could replace Gardevoir and Skeledurge. I could have gone with Serilege as a secondary option, but we already have a Dark type, and a future member will already have the Ghost typing. And regardless of its Ghost typing, I guarantee you will want it on this team. Armor Rogue can be gotten as a Char Cadet, and they can be found as early as South Province Area 1, albeit it only has a 1% chance of appearing, so you may be there for a little bit. From there, to evolve it into Armor Rogue, you have to gather 10 Bronze Ore Fragments and take them to an NPC in Zapapico. Then, use the auspicious armor on Char Cadet, and boom, you're set. You can get Armor Rogue relatively early, I'd say at least around a couple of gym badges. Armor Rogue has 125 special attack and 75 base speed. The speed is fine, because it's in-game, and it can get through the majority of mons pretty much just fine. With that 125 special attack though, you're going to be destroying loads of mons left and right. Not to mention, Armor Rogue has what most Psychic types have, a wide move pool. I think Armor Rogue is one of the best fire type choices to choose from. Now of course, it is version exclusive, but I figured everyone has to complete their dexes, right? If you absolutely cannot trade though and need a replacement, Arcanine is a great one. Growlithe can be found at North Province Area 2, East Province Area 2, or East Province Area 3, or South Province Area 3. You can evolve it into Arcanine via Firestone. You can find one in East Province Area 2, or you can find them via Sparkling Items. Arcanine is a mixed attacker with 110 attack, 100 special attack, and 95 base speed. Its move pull is pretty good, sporting anything from extreme speed upon evolution, flamethrower for stab, play rough via move relearner, and it has access to the elemental fangs aside from ice. I don't want to spend too much time on Arcanine though, because the primary member I want to go with is Armor Rogue. But with that, let's hop into its moveset. Basically, any special fire move until Armor Cannon, Psy Shock slash Psychic, Energy Ball, and Aura Sphere are the moves for this Pokemon I'm going with today. Now, Armor Rogue doesn't learn Armor Cannon until level 62. However, it does have some great fire type attacks until then. Mystical Fire can be learned via Mover Learner, and there are a few more it can learn via Level Up, such as Incinerate at level 28 and Lava Plume at level 32. Psy Shock is learned right when it evolves, or Psychic can be found or made as a TM. You get it by defeating Tulip, or you can create it with 10k LP, 5 Railor Mud, 3 Indeedee Fur, and 3 Ralts Dust. The choice is up to you. Psy Shock does attack based on the opponent's defense stat, however. For coverage, Energy Ball can be found as a TM in North Province Area 1, or made with 10k LP, 5 Deerling Fur, 3 Applin Juice, and 3 Bramblin Twig. Lastly, we have Aura Sphere, and that of course is also a TM. This can be found in Dalazapa Passage, or can be crafted for 8k LP, 5 Rolts Dust, 3 Hoppip Leaf, and 3 Skittle Leaf. Before going into the next mon, if you chose Arcanine instead of Armor Rogue, I decided on a replacement for Resumeral so that you can get some Psychic type action. Slowpoke can be found in East Province Area 1, and can later be evolved in the Slowbro at level 37. If you want Slow King, that can also suffice. You get that by having Slowpoke hold a King's Rock while trading. For Slowbro, you can run Surf, Psychic, Ice Beam, and Flamethrower. Or you can run Calm Mind if you want to set up. Flamethrower can be found as a TM north of Tag Tree Thicket, or crafted for 10k LP, 5 Patchery Sufer, 3 Tadbulb Mucus, and 3 Pichu Fur. Calm Minds can be made with 3k LP, 3 Stantler Hair, and 3 Indeedee Fur. If Starmie was in this game, it would have been the choice. But we unfortunately don't have access to Starmie in Scarlet and Violet. Maybe we will with DLC. Starting the second half of the team, I decided on going with Clodzire. Yep, it's already returning after the Kukwavel team. Clodzire is a pretty solid ground type with great game availability, decent move pull, good special defense, and a very good ability with Water Absorb covering one of its major weaknesses. Due to this, a lot of people praise Clodzire, and as they should, it's a solid Pokemon. I also have a video over on Mystic Umbreon Shorts where I go over how good Clodzire is for an in-game playthrough, so I won't talk about it a ton, but I will say you can get Paldean Wooper at the very beginning of the game, so you're going to have it pretty dang quick. Paldean Wooper evolves into Clodzire at level 20, so you will have a fully evolved Pokemon pretty fast. Clodzire will be able to take a lot of hits, and has quite the rep on people's teams, as you guys have shown in the comment section and other forms of media. It's a fan favorite that's actually pretty solid to use. Now, I will say there are other ground type options like Crocodile, Gastrodon, and Garchomp, 
But for one, we already have a lot of speedy attackers. And two, we already used Gastrodon for the original best team. So I wanted to be a little bit different. But I think Claude Zyre balances out the team pretty good. So that's why I chose it. Now let's move on to the move pool. Earthquake, Poison Jab slash Gunk Shot, Megahorn, and Zen Headbutt are the moves we're going to be using on Claude Zyre today. Earthquake can be learned at level 48, but I know damn well no one wants to wait that long. Instead, you can get the TM for it by defeating five trainers in the Asado Desert, and then after, talking to the NPC at the Kaskarafa Pokemon Center. For Poison Stab, I have two options. Poison Jab for accuracy, or Gunk Shot for more power and less accuracy. Poison Jab can be learned at level 24, and Gunk Shot is a TM. The recipe calls for 5k LP, 3 Tatsugiri Scales, 3 Krogunk Poison, and 3 Varum Fume. Megahorn is learned at level 36, and Zen Headbutt is a TM with a recipe of 10,000 LP, 5 Finneon Scales, 3 Finizen Mucus, and 3 Wiglet Sand. For the second to last member, we already have a repeating Scarlet and Violet veteran, being Annihilab. I've praised this powerhouse a lot in my previous videos, so I'll keep this short. You know why I've chosen it. It starts off as a Mankey and can be found in South Province Area 5 or West Province Area 1. From there, it'll evolve into Primeape at level 28 and then into Annihilate once it uses the move Rage Fist 20 times. Annihilate has the great typing of Ghost in Fighting, with 90 base speed and 115 attack, perfect for destroying an in-game playthrough. It's got a little bit of bulk as well, 110 HP and pretty decent defenses. Plus, if hit, Rage Fist gets powered up. Speaking of Rage Fist, let's hop into the moveset. The moveset is the same from the original best team. Rage Fist, Close Combat, Acrobatic, and Ice Punch making up its moveset. Rage Fist, of course, is Annihilate's new signature move. The more Annihilate gets hit by the opponent, the stronger Rage Fist gets. It's pretty wild. It's learned, of course, as a Primeape, since you need to use this move to evolve as we just went over. So let's move on. Close Combat is learned at level 39, though Drain Punch as a TM I think is a very fair alternative if you really want to get the most out of Rage Fist. The Acrobatics TM is found near Casa Roya Lake and in East Province Area 3, but the best way to get it is to beat Nela for the recipe and then make it with Watchroll and Bombardier Feathers. Finally, Ice Punch, which is always pretty good for coverage, that's learned via TM, and its recipe can be gotten after beating Atticus, made with Cub Chew Fur and Meditite Sweat. It's also found in Kaskarafa just laying around, so that'll probably be a little easier. This is pretty much the same thing as the original best team, so let's move on. The last mon we'll be going with may surprise some of you. For the original best team, I chose Tinkaton as our still type. Today, however, we're mixing it up by using Magnazone. Magnemite can be found at East Province Areas 2 and 3. At level 30, it'll evolve into Magneton. To evolve into Magnazone, its evolution method has actually changed. Now all you have to do is use a Thunderstone on it. The easiest way to get a Thunderstone is to have three badges and head over to Delibird Presence. This can be applied for Arcanine as well with the Firestone. Anywho though, Magnazone is a very powerful special attacker with the fun typing of Electric and Steel while also sporting a high defense stat. If you've used Magnazone before, then you know how good it is. With that, I won't waste any more time. Let's get into the moveset. Thunderbolt, Flash Cannon, Charge Beam, and Tri Attack. Thunderbolt can be found as a TM over by Port Marinera. I mean Marinata, I know it's pronounced that. I just think Marinara is funny. The recipe for it is 10,000 LP, 5 Pachirisu Fur, 3 Tadbulb Mucus, and 3 Pichu Fur. Flash Cannon can be learned at level 34. Tri Attack can be relearned, and who doesn't like having a chance to burn, freeze, or paralyze your opponent? Lastly, we have Charge Beam. There's a 70% chance Magnazone's special attack will go up if it hits. I know Magnazone doesn't exactly have the greatest coverage, but regardless, this moveset should still do some justice for it. Okay, now on to the last part of the video, the battle performances. I'm just gonna kinda go through these a little bit fast. Like with the OG best team for Scarlet and Violet, let's cover the Titans first. Bombardier should go down to Magnazone, Tatsugiri slash Dondoza will go down to Azumarill, Magnazone, and Meowskarata, Iron Tread slash Great Tusk can be taken out with Azumarill for both, if you're playing Scarlet, Meowskarata can help with Great Tusk, and if you're playing Violet, the Fire Types and Annihilate can help with the Iron Treads. Just be careful. Orthrum can also be taken out with the Fire Types and Annihilate. Claude Zyre won't work against Orthrum due to its ability, Earth Eater. Cloth can be taken out with Meowskarata, Magnazone, Annihilate, and Azumaro. For Gym Leaders, Katie, Fire Types, Brassius, Fire Types, and Claude Zyre, Tulip, Annihilate, and Meowskarata, Kofu, Magnazone Line and Meowskarata, Rhyme, Annihilate and Meowskarata, Grusha, Fire Types and Annihilate, for Iono, use Claude Zyre, just be aware of Levitate on this Magius, 
And for Larry, use Annihilate. For Elite Four members, use Meowscarada and Azumarill for Rika. Poppy, use Fire Types and Annihilate. Hassel, use Azumarill. For Larry, Magnezone can pretty much do well against all the team members, but use the Fire Types or Clodzire for Tropius and Azumarill for Flamigo and Altaria. For Champion Gita, Annihilate or Meowscarada can be used for Espathra. The Fire Types on Go Goat, Magnezone, Meowscarada, Clodzire, or Annihilate for Volusa. Avalugs, use the Fire Types and Annihilate. Can Gambit, use Annihilate, Clodzire, or Fire Types. And for Glamora, you can use Clodzire or Armor Rogue Psychic capabilities. For Team Star, use Azumarill on Mela. For Giacomo, you can use Azumarill again, or the Annihilate evolution line. For Ortega, you can use Magnezone or Clodzire. Aerie, once again, you can use Azumarill or Armor Rogue. Atticus, you can use Clodzire or Armor Rogue again. For Miss Cassiopeia's Evolutions, Annihilate can be used for Umbreon, Magnezone or Meowscarada for Vaporeon, Clodzire for Jolteon, Azumarill for Flareon, Fire Types for Leafeon, and Magnezone or Clodzire for Sylveon. Lastly, for the other important trainers and professors, Azumarill, Meowscarada, or Annihilate can be used for Nimona's Lycanroc, Azumarill for her Gudra, Annihilate for Dedunsparce, Annihilate or the Fire Types for Orthworm, Clodzire for Pomot, and Magnezone or Meowscarada for Coquavel. For Arvin, you can use Annihilate on Greedon, Meowscarada and Magnezone for Cloyster, Annihilate can use Acrobatics on Skullvillain, Toad Scroll, you can pretty much use the Fire Types or any Ice Coverage, Garganical, use Meowscarada or Azumarill, for the good boy Mabastiv, use Azumarill or Annihilate. Lastly, for the professors, against Sada, Slitherwing will go down to the Fire Types or Annihilate's Acrobatics. Clodzire can be used for Screamtail if you're ballsy, but I would just use Annihilate. Clodzire or the Fire Types can be used on Brute Bonnet. Fluttermane, you can use Annihilate. Sandy Shocks, Meowscarada. And for Roaring Moon, use Azumarill. And for Turo, Clodzire for Iron Moth, Magnezone for Iron Bundle, Armor Rogue or Clodzire for Iron Hands, for Iron Jugulus, use Azumarill or Annihilate, Iron Thorns, Annihilate, or Meowscarada, and for Iron Valiant, use Azumarill or Armor Rogue. That was a lot. If I missed any, go ahead and correct me in the comment section below. Well, that was the best team for Meowscarada in a Scarlet and Violet playthrough. What'd you guys think of the team? Would you do anything different? If so, let me know in the comments below. This isn't the last best team you'll see for Scarlet and Violet. I have a very special series coming out in January that I think you guys might enjoy. Until then though, I will see you all very soon for more future Scarlet and Violet content. Thanks for watching the video and for coming through and enjoying Scarlet and Violet with me. We've got so much content coming surrounding Gen 9 through the end of the year and beyond, including the top 10 strongest Pokemon, the best team for the games, and much more. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. When we get to 5,000 subs on the channel, we're going to have a new series related to Scarlet and Violet that will be exclusive to there, so go subscribe. Also, if you're into fan fictions or Genshin Impact, check out Mystic Reads and Tevachinary. I offer a ton of creative spoken word content over there, and I do a bunch of theories and lore videos surrounding Genshin Impact. So come join me over there at that Fulcher boat. That's all for now. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time for more Scarlet and Violet content.